Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. If you're new, my name's Amanda. So in today's video, I have three super easy and delicious Thanksgiving dessert recipe ideas for you. I know you're gonna wanna stay tuned for these. So guys, I have three easy and really delicious dessert recipes for you that will be just perfect for your Thanksgiving dinner. I cannot believe it's already November and that Thanksgiving will be here before we know it. I've got a pumpkin pie for you that has a streusel topping. And if you're kind of on the fence with pumpkin pie, this will send it right over the top for you because that streusel topping, oh my word, if it was just regular pumpkin pie, I could pass on it. But with that streusel topping, it is so very good. It makes such a difference in it. I think you'll really enjoy that. I've also got pumpkin cheesecake bars, which I mean cheesecake, right? So, you know, that's always gonna be good. And interestingly enough, I actually did a poll over on Instagram and I asked if people would prefer pumpkin pie or pumpkin cheesecake. And the overwhelming majority actually picked pumpkin cheesecake. I was kind of surprised because, you know, pumpkin pie is that traditional kind of standby. So I thought that was really interesting but that was kind of a fun poll to do. And then I've also got some baked apples that are absolutely amazing. That topping on those is this crumbly, it's almost like a cookie. It's so good, I think you'll really enjoy those. And guys, this video is also really special because it's in collaboration with my friend Valerie at The Hargett Life. She is hosting an open collab that's themed to Thanksgiving dessert. So there's gonna be lots of yummy, delicious recipes over there. Make sure you check out Valerie's channel and the entire playlist. I'll have it all linked below in the description box. I think you'll find a lot of delicious recipes there. So you won't wanna miss out on those. Now, if you're coming over from one of the other channels or you're just new here, welcome. I'm so glad to have you here. I do all kinds of what's for dinners, uh, recipe videos. It's all about the food here. So if that sounds like something you might like, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and join my YouTube family. Also hit that notification bell so you get notified every time I post a new video. I've got lots of delicious things planned that I know you won't want to miss. Now go ahead and give me a thumbs up if you're excited to see these desserts. I'm really excited to share them with you, but let's go ahead and get into the video. So let's get started making our pumpkin pie with streusel topping. Now this is perfect to make the day before Thanksgiving or even a day before that. That way that you can keep it in the refrigerator and it'll be ready to go on Thanksgiving day for you. This recipe really couldn't get any easier. It's just a can of pumpkin, a can of sweetened condensed milk, two eggs, some cinnamon, ginger, nutmeg, a little bit of salt, and of course, you know, your unbaked pie crust, which I just bought the frozen shells, and I did just let that thaw out beforehand. But we're just going to mix all that together really well and get it good and combined, and then we're going to pour it in our pie shell. Now, this has a little bit of different baking instructions. So, like, you bake it at 425 degrees for 15 minutes, and then you drop down the heat and bake it for 35 to 40 more at 350. Now this recipe also includes three different recipes for toppings to use on top of this. Our favorite has always been the streusel topping. It is so amazing. I cannot even tell y'all. It just, that crunch on there, the taste with the pumpkin, it's just all so good together. Honestly, I would not be really probably a pumpkin pie fan if it wasn't for the streusel topping. So now we're gonna get started on our streusel topping. That's just a half a cup of brown sugar, a half a cup of flour, and we're gonna cut in a fourth a cup of cold butter just until it gets into kind of coarse crumbs. I do like to leave some chunkier pieces in there because to me they taste really good when they are baked. So I do let those kind of stay in there. I don't get it fully uh, into little coarse crumbs. But you also can stir in nuts to this. Uh, my daughter doesn't like nuts and she loves this pie. So I don't put those in there, but those would be really good too. Now, if you're using the streusel topping, the baking instructions are a little bit different. So I have that recipe link below. So make sure you pay attention to those. Uh, that changes it just a little bit, but it's still super simple. It just has to bake a little differently. And mine actually, I think ended up taking a little bit longer than it said. I think about 10 minutes. You're basically going to want to be able to stick a knife in the center of that pie and it come out clean. And as long as you can do that, then it sh you should be good to go. 
Because obviously once you get all that streusel topping on there, it's kind of hard to see if it's jiggly. You can a little bit still, but uh, it's still kind of hard to tell unless you stick that knife in the center and that works perfectly. But we're just going to get all that streusel spread on there. Like I said, that streusel is like the best part. It's so good with that pumpkin pie. Now let me know in the comments below, are you pumpkin pie fans or do you like something else? I told you all about that poll I had on Instagram. I thought that was so interesting that so many people preferred pumpkin cheesecake over pumpkin pie. But y'all look at that. Does that not look so good? It, I just love that, that topping. It makes it totally different to me than a regular pumpkin pie. If you don't like regular pumpkin pie, I really encourage you to try it this way because it might just win you over. But I just topped it with a little bit of whipped cream and it is so good. I do recommend you chill it for a few hours or overnight. It tastes best in my opinion cold, but this is such a good recipe. I'll have it linked below. So now we're going to get started on our easy baked cinnamon apples. And y'all, these were so good. I was so impressed with all these recipes. We're just going to take three apples and we're going to slice them in half. And then we're going to kind of core the middle out and get the stem pieces and all that out. And then we're just going to place them in our baking dish. And we're going to get started on the topping that goes on them. And y'all, that topping, it really tasted almost like a cookie. It was so good. Like, I think the topping would actually be fantastic to make and use as a, a topping on ice cream and things like that because it was that good. So now I had never made baked apples before, but I have had them before. And I remember I had them somewhere one time and I thought they were so good. And I've always meant to try them at home, but I just never have done it. But I saw this recipe and I thought I've got to try it. I, I thought it was so funny. They actually say that they liked a lot of topping uh, to apple ratio, you know, like as far as that, for it to be higher on the topping end. And this was, this was like a great amount of topping for it. I love that. So I've just got a little bit of brown sugar and cinnamon mixing together there. And we're just going to sprinkle that on the tops of our apples. And then we're going to get started on our actual crumble type mix. And that is a super simple recipe. It's just very, all these I feel like just didn't really have a whole lot of ingredients. Everything was very simple, easy to make. And I really like that, especially for Thanksgiving, because you already have so many other things to cook. That if you can find things that are pretty simple to throw together, but still really delicious, it helps out so much. So I've got a whole stick of butter I'm putting in a pan over medium heat and we're just going to melt that butter. Once it melts, you're just going to remove that from the heat and then we're going to add in our other ingredients. So we'll have some flour, some rolled oats, some brown sugar, cinnamon, and just a little bit of salt. And that's just going to all stir together. And it really almost does look like a little bit of a cookie dough of sorts. And now once we get that all combined, we're just going to scoop that on top of our apples. I used like an ice cream scoop to try to get it even as I could. And that worked fine for me. You just need to pat it down. And it took more than one scoop per an apple because there was a lot of topping, which I really liked. And my daughter actually loved that topping too. She was talking about, she's actually mentioned about it tasting like a cookie. But basically just get it kind of patted down on there so that it sticks to the apple. And that's it. You know, we cover it with some foil and we start baking it at 375 degrees for about 25 minutes. And then we're going to uncover it and bake it for another 20 to 30 minutes. I believe I did 20 and my apples were, you know, tender, but they were not just like, you know, falling apart or anything like that. So if you like that falling apart kind of texture, you may want to take it a little longer. We actually really liked that, that taste of it still having a little bit of texture still left to it. So that was really good. But y'all, I cannot recommend these enough. They were so good. We served them with a scoop of ice cream and drizzled some caramel sauce on top. It, it was just really, really good. And especially I love caramel anyways. And I feel like it goes really well with apples. So I highly recommend this. It was really, really good. And it would be so simple for your Thanksgiving dinner. I think this also makes a really pretty presentation. I always love recipes like that, especially when they're easy and then you can make them look so nice. And it looks like you put a lot more effort into it than you did. Those are always nice. So last we have our pumpkin cheesecake bars and guys, I really did save the best for last because I love cheesecake and these bars were so amazing. I cannot recommend them enough. So we've just got some ginger snap cookies that we're blending together and getting them all good and crushed up. Now we actually made half of this recipe and I made another change, I believe it was. So I'll have that down below. Like I'll put a little notes section and let you know what I changed about it. But basically we're just going to take these crumbs and we're going to add some butter and a tablespoon of brown sugar and that's going to make our crust. And so we're just going to get those combined and press it into our pan. 
Now, I highly recommend using parchment paper. I actually do grease the pan a little bit just to get the parchment paper to stick. And then I put the parchment paper down. But y'all, it makes it so much easier to lift out recipes like this that are in bar form that you want to cut all nice and neat. And so I really cannot recommend that enough. It works out so well. But we're going to get those all pressed down in there. And we're going to get ready to start our cheesecake mixture. Now, I know that cheesecake can be kind of intimidating. I've always been intimidated to make an actual cheesecake. Like, I helped a friend one time make one, but I've never done one, like, all by myself in a springform pan and all that stuff. But these bar top recipes are so very good, and I've always had them turn out really well. So, I can't recommend them enough. They work out really well. Now in the bowl, I'm just blending together some cream cheese and sugar. And then once that gets all blended together, we're going to go ahead and add in our pumpkin, our spices, and our vanilla and blend that again. Then we'll add in our eggs one at a time. Get that just until it's mixed and ready to go. And then we'll be ready to get it all baked. Now this does bake for 45 minutes, so it takes just a little bit of time. But the hardest part on this is that it needs to chill because it really... I think just anything about cream cheese does better a lot of times when it's chilled like that. But that also means it is the perfect recipe to make ahead of time for Thanksgiving. So you could easily make this a day or two before Thanksgiving and have it all ready to go. It's such a time saver because there's so many different things to cook on Thanksgiving that anything you can find to do ahead of time will really help you out. So do you do all the cooking at your house? Do you share responsibilities with people? Let me know kind of what your plan is, at least for this year. I know that some years that may change. I'll be cooking our whole dinner, but my kids and husband will help too. So that'll be nice. And that's kind of a fun time together too, when everybody kind of does things like that together. Uh, I'm especially going to have the kids on dish duty. <laughs> because I tell you that is the one thing about cooking at home Thanksgiving any of that stuff but there you know all the cooking means lots of dishes so I'll definitely be having some helpers there so we're going to go ahead and get this in the oven like I said that bakes for 45 minutes or until that center is pretty much set you don't want it to be real jiggly or anything like that we topped ours with some whipped cream and some caramel sauce and it was so good I love that ginger snap crust too Thank y'all so much for joining me today. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, I'd appreciate it if you would give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to check out Valerie's channel and the entire Thanksgiving dessert playlist link below in the description box. And thank you so much, Valerie, for hosting such a fun collab. I can't wait to see what everyone has made. I hope each of you have a blessed day and I'll see you in the next one.